Our devotional today is entitled, Be Dressed and Ready to Serve. And I will begin with Psalm 104, verses 1 through 4, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a cloak, stretching out heaven like a tent curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He walks upon the wings of the wind. He makes the winds his messengers, flaming fire his ministers. The psalmist says in Psalm 93 verse 1, The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord has clothed and girded himself with strength. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. Romans chapter 13 verses 9 through 14 says, For this you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, And if there is any other commandment, it is summed up in this saying, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Do this knowing the time, that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is almost gone and the day is near. Therefore, let us rid ourselves of the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let's behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and debauchery, not in strife and jealousy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lusts. When we are saved, and we have been born anew, and we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and asked for his Holy Spirit to live within us, we are then clothed with Christ. We have a new wardrobe, so to speak. We take off the old way of doing things that we have renounced, uh, like we would take off a coat or a sweater, and we put on our new clothing the way Christ behaves, his attributes, living a godly life instead of what was before. And that's what this is talking about. Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 10. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord anointed me to bring good news to the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the cloak of praise instead of a disheartened spirit. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will raise up the former devastations, and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers will stand and pasture your flocks, and foreigners will be your farmers and your vine dressers. But you will be called the priests of the Lord. You will be spoken of as ministers of our God. You will eat the wealth of nations, and you will boast in their riches. Instead of your shame, you will have a double portion. And instead of humiliation, they will shout for joy over their portion. Therefore, they will possess a double portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery in the burnt offering, and I will faithfully give them their reward and make an everlasting covenant with them. 
Then their offspring will be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them will recognize them because they are the offspring whom the Lord has blessed. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Galatians 3 verses 26 and 27 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Here's a reminder of the original intent. Genesis 1 verse 26 says, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. We were made to look like and behave like God. Colossians 3 says, Do not lie to one another, since you stripped off the old self with its evil practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created it. A renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. So, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so must you do also. In addition to all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Colossians 2 verses 9 and 10 says, For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form, and in him you have been made complete, and he is the head over all rule and authority. In John fourteen twenty three, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Again, in Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7, it says, Therefore you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, so walk in him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. Luke 24, verse 49 says, And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Here's another piece of our clothing. It's the power of God. Isaiah 51, in verses 9 and 11, says, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the days of old, the generations of long ago. Was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the dragon? God can take care of our enemies. He puts on power and strength and he can take our enemies out. He knows exactly who they are and where they live. And he is fully capable of taking down the enemy. And Isaiah 51, verse 11, So the ransomed of the Lord will return and come with joyful shouting to Zion, and everlasting joy will be on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Again, in chapter 52, verse 1 of Isaiah, it says, Awake, awake, clothe yourself with strength. O Zion, clothe yourself in your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean will no longer come into you. It's written, and we can claim that as a promise of the Lord, that he has clothed us with, that the enemies of God 
can no longer come against the beloved of God, wherever they live. Proverbs 31 verse 25. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she smiles at the future. 1 Peter 5 verses 4 through 7 says, And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. You younger men likewise be subject to your elders, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. That's another piece of clothing you don't want in your wardrobe, is anxiety and fear and stress and worry. All those sweaters got to go. We are to clothe ourselves with humility. And he gives us the grace to be humble. And someone humble, someone meek, is not continually worried. They have a gentle spirit. Like Moses was called the most meek man. Jesus was called meek and gentle. And these are our templates. And quite obviously, Jesus is the greater template. He was better at it than anyone. First Peter 3, verses 3 through 6. Your adornment must not merely be external, braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you have become her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. Now let's look at our clothing that comes from God himself, that is his own armor. Saul tried to put his armor on David for the battle against Goliath, and it just didn't fit. So David had to go with what he knew. But this is God's own armor that he places upon us. Beginning in verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, so that you will be able to resist in the day of evil, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having belted your waist with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having strapped on your feet the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With every prayer and request, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be alert with all perseverance and every request for all the saints. Colossians 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of God richly dwell within you, with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Here's another example from ancient Israel's history. It's recorded in the book of Nehemiah in chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. It says, From that day on, half of my servants carried on the work, while half of them held spears, the shields, the bows, and the breastplates, and the captains were behind the whole house of Judah. Those who were rebuilding the wall and those who carried burdens took their load with one hand doing the work and the other holding a weapon. As for the builders, each wore his sword girded at his side as he built. 
while the trumpeters stood near me. I learned from this that no one walks alone because Jesus is always with us. But here in this ancient time, they helped each other. One carried the weapon, one built, also carrying a weapon. One stood ready to sound the alarm should there have been any danger. So no one did their work alone. There was teamwork. And we need the same teamwork now. None of us can do this alone, but we have the indwelling Holy Spirit. He has clothed us with Christ. He's given us everything that we need to win the spiritual battle that continues to rage daily. He's given us the prayer to pray daily. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread, etc., etc. And so these things that we have learned today, these articles of clothing, let's say, our crowns, the mantle that we have been given, we are crowned with love and compassion. We are crowned with salvation. We are crowned with glory and honor. We are crowned with everlasting joy and a crown of life. We are crowned with the glory of God and his beauty. We have a glorious crown and a beautiful wreath. We have been crowned with life and with righteousness. And these are all according to scripture. And I will post these notes in my website, which I, I link each time I do these devotionals um, in, the, in the description below. We are crowned with blessing. We are crowned with noble character. We are crowned with grandchildren. We are crowned with splendor. And we are crowned with Christ. Our clothing, we are clothed in light, salvation, righteousness, joy, praise, compassion, kindness, and humility. We are clothed with gentleness, patience, love, power, and strength. And we are clothed with dignity. We are clothed with the truth with readiness, and with faith, and with the glory of God. And so I bless you today, and I say, get your gear on, clothed with Christ. <laughs>